There are two basic ways that we can teach the Bible, by topic or by exposition. The first way of teaching the Bible is topically. Topical teaching means picking a relevant subject and then drawing in verses from the entire Bible to build up an overall thesis on that subject. The topic may be angels and demons, prayer, parenting, money, heaven, anything really. The second way of teaching the Bible is expository. Expository teaching means systematically going through the individual books of the Bible, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book. The idea behind this method is that every part of the Bible will eventually be covered, the difficult or controversial passages won't be avoided, and most importantly, everything will be read and understood within its original grammatical, cultural and historical contexts. Basically, with topical teaching, you're starting with a relevant issue which you feel the church needs to hear about, and then using the whole Bible to support the thesis. With expository, you're starting with the Word of God and pulling truths out of that to create the thesis. Many churches, and particularly seminaries, would argue that expository teaching is the only valid way to preach the Bible. They argue that topical preaching is too open to abuse and misinterpretation. They say that pastors could come up with a false thesis and then pluck verses from the Bible out of context to support it. They say that topical pastors can stick to populist messages and never tackle the more difficult but equally necessary parts of the Bible. They would argue that it is only through expository preaching that we really get to the author's real intended message. They would say that it's the only way to be sure that we're not letting man set the agenda, but that God's word is taking precedence. This is an opinion that has gathered momentum, and so there are many churches who never deviate from this way of teaching. It's expository only. Strictly no topical preaching allowed. Honestly, I think these people make good points. Expository teaching does help stop pastors from preaching their favourite topics all the time and avoiding tricky passages. Although I have been in churches where expository pastors have skipped verses or chapters because they found it too tricky, so this isn't a foolproof argument. But it also does help people understand verses within the right context too. Good exposition is a fantastic thing, I'm very much for it. However, I am against the idea of expository only. Because when we don't tackle topical issues, it can very quickly create this feeling of disconnect between what's happening in church and what's happening in real life. Church can start to feel like nothing but an academic exercise. Let me explain. Imagine a church is doing an expository study of the book of Isaiah. The people come to church the first week and they hear teaching from Isaiah 1. Then they go out into the real world and something like the financial crisis may happen. Suddenly they have questions and concerns regarding the crumbling economy and what the Bible says about money. They take those questions with them to church the following Sunday and do they get answers there? No, they get Isaiah 2 because that's the expository program the church is on and they're sticking to it. The following week, out in the real world, there are tsunamis and earthquakes and reports of Christian persecution. Christians ask themselves valid questions like, Why do Christians suffer? Are these the end times? What should we do if persecuted? How can we support our persecuted brothers and sisters in other areas? Is there anything practical that we can do? They take these questions to the church the next Sunday and do they get answers? No, they get Isaiah 3 because we're sticking to the program. The following week someone is told that they have cancer and won't live much longer. Another is having parenting troubles with a tearaway teenager. They bring questions about these real problems to church, but do they get answers? No, they get Isaiah 4. You get the picture. The world is full of important topical issues right now. The Middle East situation begs questions about God's plan for Israel. The approval of gay marriage by our politicians raises questions about what real marriage is, why it's important and why God ordained it. Postmodernism begs questions about whether right and wrong are objective or subjective and whether all paths lead to heaven. It's not as though we don't have questions and challenges and problems. And as we go out to our schools and workplaces, these are the kinds of things our friends and colleagues ask us about. These are the kinds of things that they discuss. They want to know if God has anything relevant to say about the matter. We know that God does have answers and we wish we knew what they were, but in our church last Sunday all we heard was where Paul went on his second missionary journey or what the Greek word for prayer is. 
there's this disconnect between the real world that we're facing out there with all its real problems and the teaching we receive. In some extreme cases, expository pastors are known to spend whole sermons on a single word or up to an entire decade on a single book of the Bible. How is this going to help anyone achieve a comprehensive biblical worldview from which to face the challenges of the day? Expository teaching is as open to abuse as topical teaching is, and because of such things, many have formed the opinion that Christianity is nothing but an intellectual exercise, which is interesting, but largely irrelevant to daily life. We go into this building on a Sunday morning to hear a lecture, and then come out again and get on with our lives, having gained nothing that will really help us with the Monday morning. So we have to ask the question, is it really such a terrible thing to preach topically? Is it such a bad idea to give people answers to real problems? Is expository preaching really the only valid method? When we look through the pages of the Bible, we find that Jesus himself preached topically. When Jesus preached, he didn't open up the scriptures at Exodus and then go through it verse by verse and chapter by chapter with his disciples. He preached about things that affected the people and used the scriptures to support what he was saying. The Sermon on the Mount was a topical sermon. First he teaches on the topic of law, then anger, then adultery, then divorce, then vows, revenge, love for enemies, giving to the needy, money and possessions, judgment and then prayer. He dips into the scriptures for reference points or support for what he's saying. You have heard it said. He preached like that all the way through his ministry. In fact, the last teaching that he is recorded to have given was after his resurrection when he sat down with his disciples and took them through the scriptures, pointing out all the verses that revealed himself as the Messiah. So from beginning to end, Jesus wanted to give people answers on important topics. Even more than this, a lot of what Jesus talks about in the Gospels actually comes in response to direct questions from people in the crowd or from his disciples. Teacher, I have this issue with paying taxes to Caesar. Should we do that? Teacher, what do you say about? Teacher, why does this happen? Teacher, is it right to? The people set the topic and then Jesus responds to these questions, sometimes with parables rather than verses, but often dipping into the scripture to support his claims, saying things like, that is why the scriptures say, or haven't you read the words of the prophets? Now you'll notice that this way of teaching is far less formal than what we're used to in the church today. When was the last time that you saw a pastor taking questions from the congregation? Safe to say it doesn't happen that often. But if Jesus taught topically and then allowed questions from the crowd, why don't we emulate him? Why don't we allow some interaction and participation? Jesus had real answers for real people on the real issues that concerned them. Why is it that instead of emulating that and doing what Jesus did, we now merely do a systematic intellectualized study of what Jesus did? As you work through the rest of the New Testament, you'll also discover that Paul's letters are topical. Read the epistles and you'll find that they generally go along the lines of, I hear you have this problem in your church. Well, this is what God says about that. Or, I have heard reports of this kind of immorality in your church. This is my instruction on the matter. Like Jesus, Paul directly addresses the issues which are facing the church of a particular town or region. He chastises, he exhorts, he reasons, and he uses scripture to support his position. Again, real ignorance is being corrected and real wrongs are being redressed. People today have a genuine thirst for answers in a very confusing world. They're just looking in the wrong places for the answers because the church isn't giving them any. Is there any truth to the claims of evolution? Does the increase in wars and natural disasters mean we're in the last days? My grandparent just died. Has she gone to heaven? My pet just died. Has it gone to heaven? What will heaven actually be like? Should we vote? How should I handle money? Is hell real? Where was God when that tsunami hit last week? These are real questions from real people for which the Bible has real answers, but the church often doesn't supply them. The come and watch format of our Sunday services means you get the show and the message that has been prepared for that week and nothing more. It is designed for you to stay passive, simply to watch and listen, feel emotional at the right moments and dutifully volunteer for some of our pre-approved programs. This should not be so.
I've noticed that topical sermon series are the ones that people get most excited about and the ones that are most well attended. And that's simply because they bring insight, hope, encouragement and direction to a church that is currently facing bewildering problems, marginalisation and persecution. Christians need this information. I think it's worth referring to Mark Driscoll here, the pastor of Mars Hill Church in Seattle. Driscoll allows people to text questions during the sermon. At the end of his message, a few of the questions come up on the screen and without having any forewarning, he ends up delving into issues that others normally wouldn't broach, such as sex and pornography, for example. The fact that he dares to take these questions on and talks about such things from the platform has created much controversy. Many people have criticised him for talking about such unseemly things in church, like real issues and authenticity with one another is not for the church setting, like we must just keep up the superficial, pretentious, churchy facade, pretend everything's alright and keep hiding our problems and our sin from one another. If we can't be real with fellow Christians, then when can we be? Driscoll is just meeting people's real questions with real answers, and of course they are responding to it as Mars Hill continues to be one of the fastest growing churches in the United States. The people go there knowing they're going to get some connection with the issues that are actually affecting them. Relevance is not a bad word. God has answers, the Bible has answers, the world just doesn't know about them. The church needs to be empowered with this knowledge so that we can be bold and courageous in telling the world about it. And of course, this is another one of those problems that can be solved more easily with a switch to a small group format. 